Okay, so um, I am Armin Rigo, and I'm here to to let Roman speak. <laughs> Hi. Um, so it's the biggest crowd I've ever spoken in front of, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, you can find me on the internet. Um, I've done PyPy work and also a bit of Cython work. I tried to make Cython and PyPy work together and the approach was wrong, but it was interesting to see because now we know it's wrong. And I've worked on Python 3 and NumPy support, mostly. So yes, um, last year we didn't give a PyPy talk and then people asked us if PyPy was dead. So no, it's fine, don't worry. Yes, well we would have made 10, 10 years of your Python in a row, but we broke the streak. So yes, what is PyPy? Um, PyPy is built on top of the RPython toolchain, which is a um, subset of Python on which you can write dynamic languages. So um, the main advantage uh, over C or C++ is that you get the JIT for free, basically. And also a good garbage collector. And on the, so on top of RPython, the main interpreter we've built is PyPy, which is, which is the fastest Python interpreter around. So yes, over the last two years, we've done a lot of small progress, um, things like ARM support, CFFI, eventlet, gevent support, um, incremental garbage collector. So if you're interested in games or low latency, it's better than previously. Um, fast JSON as well, so if you're doing web stuff, this can be useful. And yes, NumPy and faster, faster JIT and stuff like that. We also have UWSGI uh, support, um, thanks to the C API for embedding with it. So this is not the same API as the C Python C API but you can, you can use it to embed PyPy. So yes, RPython is a framework, so we have also, also multiple languages on top. So we have a Ruby implementation we've built uh, called Topaz, and uh, Hippie, which is a PHP VM. So yes, to do stuff faster, we need money. And, uh, <laughs> and so Python 3, I mean, we managed to do a lot of stuff with not a lot of money, I think. So Python 3 support um, is 50% done and we've done 80% of the work probably. And um, well, as well, STM, we, we made a second call for donation to have a more production ready STM. So, hopefully, if you have too much money, I mean. <laughs> and then, well, if you've donated before, then thank you. So yes, we also have done commercial support for PyPy. So if you're a big company and are afraid to use something that you don't know how to hack, then, well, you can hire us. And also, if you have performance issues, if you're open source, usually we'll help you for free, but if you're closed source, then... Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, if you have Python code, I mean, we're very compatible. Um, I mean, aside from implementation-specific stuff, um, it just works. And C code, well, we've worked a lot on, on being able to communicate with C. So we have CPyX, which is uh, the compatibility layer for the C extension API. Uh, well, the thing is, the C extension API is, 
hard to do if you're not C Python, basically. So we've built also CFFI, which is which is as fast as the C API on but, well a lot faster on PyPy. And so we have, we also have the um, embedding API, as I said, and we can we can also uh, talk with C plus plus. Um, PG to CFFI is like the best um, database driver on PyPy, for example. And we've also built CFFI-based uh, LXML and Pygame. And also we have, we've, we are slowly but steadily improving NumPy support. So yes, um, PyPy, I mean, it's just fast. And this is the, a lot of benchmarks that we have that represent real-world usage. Some of those benchmarks were uh, contributed by Unlaid in Swallow. So we didn't write them, so we didn't make right benchmark to show how fast we are. We wrote them to help us get faster. Well, we didn't write them, but we used them. And so ARM, um, thanks to the Raspberry Pi Foundation, we have, also, we have production level ARM support. Um, it's faster. Uh, the speed difference between C Python and PyPy on ARM is bigger than on x86 because the ARM CPU is not as smart and PyPy just produces very nice code for ARM and while well, C Python doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's in the standard um, distribution shipped with the Raspberry Pi, so that's quite cool. Um, NumPy support is in progress. Um, we have we passed that much that much tests, but it doesn't mean much. But it shows that well we've done stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and well, and uh, well, you it's a hit and miss right now. So if you can just try it and tell us what you need, then we'll work on that before working on something else. And we don't have SciPy support yet, but we have, we have an idea on how to make it work, so hopefully this will pan out. And no, we won't rewrite SciPy from scratch. Um, Py 3K, so we've released uh, 3.2 not so long ago, and um, <laughs> we started the 3.3 branch. Um, if, you're working, if, you, if you want to get started into PyPy, uh, this is the moment to get started, because once we've catched up with CPython, then there won't be any entry-level task left. So you can, you can find us at the sprint, and Py3K is a good way of getting started on PyPy. There's also a few missing optimizations on Python 3, but we are working on bringing them back. So yes, um, CFFI is a, is a way of interfacing with C. Um, it works. It works on the API as well as the ABI level. So unlike C types, it's more type safe. It doesn't seg fault as much. Um, unlike the C API in Cython, it runs on PyPy, which is good. And um, it's super fast on PyPy. I mean, it's almost as fast as just calling C from C. And well, STM. Well, the gil is kind of a very hard problem, but the problem is, well, but the advantage of the gil is that it's, it doesn't, well, it hides a lot of concurrency problem. So, so software transactional memory allows us to have the same gil semantics without being, without being, well, without the gil. So you can run on multiple threads. And it's also a mechanism for um, same concurrency, so you do, I mean, threads and locks are horrible, so hopefully this will be better. And um, yes, we have a release on a PyPy STM with a JIT, so we, you can find it on the PyPy blog. It wasn't released so long ago, so you can try that. And uh, that's why, and then now we're talking about having a production ready PyPy STM, maybe. And uh, if you're more interested in removing the gill, then you can see uh, our talks tomorrow morning. 
So yes, um, you can find us on IRC and um, our blog and on PyPy. And well, if you have any question, then you can ask on IRC or right now. I didn't Apple look. was so nice to basically <laughs> say, yeah, so we have Swift and then there is Python and look at these differences. But I would be really interested to turn it around. Um, yes, yeah, so the question was about Swift and how much Python sucks compared to Swift, according to <laughs> Apple. And um, well, if you can look at um, on Alex Gaynor's Twitter, he wrote um, the same algorithm. Um, Apple used for them for their benchmark, and uh, he got a good, very good performance improvement on PyPy. So I don't think I think it was just marketing stuff, basically. Yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, uh, so coming back to maybe mobile as Apple Swift. My experience in Python was that Quark per Quark arm would be about ten times slower than x86 in when writing C Python code which I put down to very small or no cache at all of the CPU, which makes sense because cache takes a lot of power. Uh, how much is, is this penalty for PyPy? Is it less of an impact or more of an impact, or is it about the same? So the question was about ARM and, well, Python and ARM and CPython compared to PyPy. So I think the main performance difference is in branch projection. Um, and PyPy does better because, well, it's a tracing JIT, so it generates uh, just w one linear trace. So basically, we. Do you think it's more due to code or data model? Code. Right. I would say. And finally, quick one. What do you think of PyPy becoming, possibly, in an ideal world, a de facto programming environment for Android? <laughs> um, <laughs> So PyPy on Android, and uh, I don't know. I mean, Google owns the platform, so ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, why don't you skip 3.3 support and go straight to 3.4 support? So why aren't we going straight from 3.2 to 3.4? Well, 3.3 is a subset of 3.4, so if we... <laughs> If we do 3.3, then we get part of 3.4. I don't think there are any language changes in 3.4. It's just library. Well, then we, we will get 3.4 for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so SciPy support. Um, we want to embed CPython, basically. And then you can pass the, well, the way we've written NumPy Pi, we, this, we use the same storage, like the, the storage is done in the same way, so you can just pass stuff around. I mean, you can pass around stuff between CPython instances, so you can do the same with PyPy, and, and you can use that. And SciPy is, well, it's, it's tons of C, which PyPy won't get any faster, so there's no point in porting that. Yes? So creating uh, .exe files, right? Yes. Standalone .exe files? Yes. Um, we don't have really anything planned on this, but if you can use the, the embedding API, um, you can probably, well, you will probably have to write the, the compiler thing to make it into one binary, but there's the embedding API, so I think it would be potentially doable. How well can you currently um, constrain resources used by the JIT? I know that the JIT 
maximum memory usage or things like this? Can you basically say I only want to have 50 or 80 megabytes used uh, by the JIT extra and it's going to actually keep to it? Um, so the um, question was about resource management in the JIT. So you can have um, you can limit the size of your traces, uh, that sort of stuff. So you can yes restrict memory. Uh. That's that's indirect. I mean, like an absolute upper limit. Yes, you can as well. I think. Okay. No, no, you can't. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The uh, the NumPy processor problem is that it's it's really hard to get the right size of traces. A few really hard problems that we'll solve that need to be fixed, or is it a bunch of little problems or a bunch of hard problems? Or what's the nature of the issue? So yes, um, <laughs> what what the NumPy well, what's not done in NumPy basically? Um, it's a lot of very small problems and yes, more testing, more um, <laughs> things like um, interfacing with um, C libraries, like for doing FFT that sort of stuff. So we are working on that, and it's also a good way to get started if you're interested. Um, well, for example, well, um, bri the bridge between C libraries and PyPy, you can do it in pure Python. You don't have to learn R Python. So it's a great way to get started, I think. Yes. Is there any incompatibilities between the standard C Python and the PyPy? You, you can write. Uh, a program and runs okay in this uh, uh, implementation of Python and, and in the other it will run without any any change. So the question was about differences between PyPy and CPython. So the garbage collector is different. So your objects aren't guaranteed to be um, cleared um, as soon as they go out of scope. So if you rely on your on destructors to free resources, it can cause problems. For example, file descriptors. So if you open a lot of files in a loop um, and you don't close them, then you will run out of file descriptors. That's the, that's one of the most well. That's one of the main differences, I would say. Mm, yes. Is the version normally a T-shirt related to PyPy? Uh, no, it's not. Well, is the number on my shot related to PyPy? No, it's related to Python. <laughs> How so? <laughs> yes? That's another question about uh, uh, a garbage collector. What is about uh, VCRAF callbacks? Are they executable? Is it signed for Mantex or some Python? Or are they also like? Um. So the question is about requests on PyPy. Um, do you know any differences? No, then no, no differences. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, probably wrote the you wrote the garbage collector, right? So <laughs> he knows best. Yes. Uh, so PyPy used to have quite a large memory footprint when it was running, and it's uh, well, it pretty increasingly improved. Where does it stand now relative to a C-Python <coughs> implementation of a real-world system? Mm -hmm. So the question is about memory consumption. So it depends on your system. I would say PyPy, well, it depends on your amount of code related to your amount of data. If you have small code but a lot of data, then the difference won't be that big. If you have a lot of code that you run very often and you have a small and you don't have that much data, then it will take more memory. And we've also fixed a bug in um, where um, file descriptors weren't, um, well, we fixed a memory leak, basically, so it can be better as well. If I could continue on that, is there any concept of memory pressure on the system that is fed into a garbage collector? Uh, is there a threshold that you can set on the garbage collector? Meaning that no, I was just repeating your question. Yeah, meaning that a garbage collector would take into account the other processes in the system in terms of how frequently it is being ran. Um, I don't think so. No. Yes, we, we're not sure. But you have, uh, you have various thresholds that you can set, like running the garbage collector more often, that sort of things. So. You can do that, and then I mean, if you if you use memory in your program and you run out of memory, I mean, 
there's nothing we can do. We can't just free some objects that... Wait, is it then a fixed percentage overhead that is kept as garbage? Um, no, I think it depends. it depends on how big your heap is. Yes? So how well how is the uh, code uh, generated by the JIT shell? So yes, it's shared um, by th well, it's shared between threads, but not between processes. What goes into PyCache in PyPy? What goes into PyCache? Um, well, CFFI-based um, extensions. But not traces. No. No, you can't have traces. Well, you can't write them to disk. Um, uh, traces are have um, memory addresses um, hard written in them. So if you reload them, then your entire memory space is different, and you can't choose them. Yes. So, um, Bob, uh, Ippolito made a strong argument, or some would say strong argument for type type annotations in, in Python as a way to increase performance and so forth. Is PyPy going to make that irrelevant, or is PyPy going to use those in fancy ways? What's the plan? So type annotations for PyPy? Um, PyPy doesn't care. Do <laughs> <laughs> you mean in the sense that they will make no difference? Yes. Or they, yes. Okay. It will make no difference. I mean, you can use them for, for checking your code or whatever, but PyPy is built for dynamic languages, so... I mean, by making the language less dynamic, you don't get that much. I mean, either you turn your language completely static, or if you keep it in between, I mean, I don't think you, you can get much performance out of annotations. Yes? Uh, the uh, library contributor itself is translated. Uh, is that usual uh, for your own programs, or is it still in a space where you can't use it for your own class? So R Python uh, as a general purpose language. Um, well, we don't recommend people who use, well, you shouldn't use uh, R Python as a regular language. If you're writing VMs, I think it's a great language, but if you're writing general purpose applications, I think it's horrible. You can, you can, you can do it, but it's your own problem. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the question was about um, implementing statically typed languages using PyPy. Um, I don't think you would get more. I think you should use other languages. I mean, I, LLVM is just about code generation. You still have to write tons of stuff to target LLVM, but I don't know. Well, at some point, um, PyPy is also just a VM. So if you target that VM for your, your language, then that's not wrong. I mean, like, lots of people, lots of languages are targeted to JVM, for example. Yes, so I know, for example, so the question was about other languages targeting PyPy. So the other question about, was about static languages, statically typed languages. I mean, you. You, I don't think you can get as much performance, performance as you could, but I know about um, Hi, the Pythonic Lisp that runs, that compiles to Python bytecode, and it runs pretty well on PyPy, so. But it's a dynamic language. <coughs> yes? Back on the subject of RAM, as uh, a while ago, I seem to recall a blog post talking about uh, having a more efficient representation of homogenous types in lists, uh, so rather than storing the higher objects, the storing the primitive data type. Um, can you say a bit about what that buys and which data type that applies to? Okay, so the question is about um, storing homogeneous types in lists and how that affects memory usage and performance. So we'll have a thing called list strategies and dict strategies and set strategies, yes. Um, so it works on basic types, basically um, integers, strings, uh, floating point numbers. And um, for example, in a list, you just store um, unboxed ints. 
So you get just it's just an array of integers like you would get in C, and uh, you can do optimiza optimizations based on that. I mean, if you if you pass an array of integer uh, to a loop, and the loop is jitted, then the loop will assume that you always pass well. The JIT specialized on the fact that the loop is only integers, and so you don't you don't need to spend time unboxing the integer, for example. And if you put it back into the list, then well, you don't get the boxing unboxing part, so it's also good for performance. What happens if you then shake and make it a non-homogeneous list? Uh, so what happens if you make it a non-homogeneous list? So you turn it back to a regular list of of objects, and then. Well, if you pass that list to the code, then it will use compile a different path. And in the Python 3 version of PyPy, um, are you assuming that you have still able to unbox integers because the integer is now uh, arbitrary size? So Python 3 integers, how are they optimized? So I, that's one of the optimizations we removed, but we want to reintroduce it. I don't know if it has been already reintroduced. Yes. It may have been already done. So. <laughs> yes. yes. I remember it, a very old block post using this software transaction in memory. It would say the initial implementation will use a pure software implementation. And then in the future, then new Intel processors are introducing hardware to support to accelerate. Is that? Um, so the question is about STM versus HTM uh, mostly. So while well, right now we are we are having a pure STM, it would be possible to have a um, hardware assisted STM. Um, but right now I don't think the CPUs are ready. Um, as well, the Haswell CPU has um, has HTM support, but the um, the limits are too big for us to to use it. Uh, so can we use the PyPyJ to generate a binary? Um, no. <laughs> no, it's... I know it's not possible now, but... I don't think so. Um, well, the PyPyJ generates um, linear traces. So it's, it uses types it sees to generate the, tra uh, the traces. And so if you wanted to compile it statically, then you would need to compile for every types possible in your program which is, I don't know, I mean, which is something similar to what hip hop did for PHP and, and uh, they ended up with a 10 gig binary, I think. So <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> yes? Yes, so C++ um, support. Um, so I think the project has moved from using um, GCC to using Clang, which is much nicer to have, well, it's easier to write plugins. So now it's using Clang for that. Yes. I didn't hear your question. Uh, did I understand correctly that for sci-fi support, you plan to embed CPython within PyPy? Yes, we are going to embed yes C, C Python inside PyPy. At least that's the approach we are we are working on. Yes, you can move. You could move potentially objects between. Um, yes, I mean it uses CFFI, so you can do what you want. It uses the <laughs> you, it uses the Python C API, so basically you can embed whatever you want. Uh, and well, I think it would be possible. Maybe I have to try. Uh, I would like to try to embed Python three inside Python two or something. <laughs> that could, that could be fun. <laughs> yes. Um, 
uh, what's the biggest installation of PyPy in production? Um, I didn't have the authorization to say it publicly, so if you, if you see me outside, then I'll tell you if you don't repeat <laughs> anyone. But, uh, So yes, I can't repeat that, but it seems that someone is using it for something complicated and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So another round of applause.